She'll look like this, a giant combining grace with power. Christmas is coming. And even without a calendar, you couldn't miss the signs, the decorations and the lights which herald the season of good cheer. Even for some of us older ones, the shop windows weave the same magic spell as they did when we were young. There's something strangely reassuring about a child's enchantment as Christmas draws near. But behind the tinsel gaiety of Toyland, there's a large industry. And production line techniques answer the modern demand for toys that mirror the real thing. Who'd want to ride in Daddy's car if this was in the Christmas stocking? It costs £100 and goes by electricity. But money is no guide in choosing a toy. Whether modern marvel or just another mechanical plaything, the final judges are the children. And we all know how unpredictable they are. But what a marvellous place a toy shop is, a world in miniature, an entrancing, miraculous world. To lose the feeling of wonder in a toy shop is perhaps the saddest thing about growing up. Worried about the expense? Here's a washable dog, designed for the credit squeeze. No, Christmas isn't only for the young. Mum and Dad can share some of the pleasures. Austerity takes a holiday while we welcome that overpowering, blown-out feeling of warm well-being. It may mean dyspepsia on Boxing Day, but who cares? But I think the children come out best in the long run. They know how to run a railway. I don't think a train set will ever lose its fascination. Even a Roman centurion falls under the spell. Look out, tunnel coming up. Here's the only grown-up who rarely comes into his own at Christmas. His job is the most important of all, to make those wishes come true. May he send us all the happiness and joy he can. To make this festival of 1957 a really Merry Christmas.